Hello all, uh, welcome to another Closure Diary video. So this time the video is about like how unsafe Python is and how safe Closure is. Okay, so that's the thing, right? So like, uh, okay, so uh, let me just explain the program. Like I just have, I've got a program called dangerouspython.py. So that's the thing. And uh, you've got a bunch of emails over here, right? And uh, uh, then we are just checking validity of email like if any email is valid or if some emails are not invalid maybe we can stop the program over here but of course like uh, uh, this is about like showing the dangers of python like not about like doing the real function so what we are just doing over here is we are just popping one thing on. okay, so that's the thing and then we are just sending the notifications right so that's the thing, right? so yeah so hope uh, we just hope that okay like Okay, if uh, check validity doesn't stop the program, uh, like uh, we can send all uh, notification to all these emails. Okay, otherwise, like yeah, like we need to stop it or something like that. So uh, that's the thing. So uh, let me just run it. Okay, so uh, okay, Python. I don't know why uh, VS Code is or like. Okay, of course, this is VS Codium uh, built from Microsoft. It's not good enough. Like uh, in uh, item, like if I just put like, okay, like Python, like uh, something like this. Okay, like Python. I do get Python. Okay, but if I just put Python over here, I do get Python. Too, right. So I, I don't know, like, of course, like Microsoft is a stupid company, right? So. Uh, if I put Python 3, yeah, I get Python. So I don't know why this happened. Like, uh, otherwise, like Microsoft just can just uh, take Apple terminal and just put it over here. Like, uh, uh, so, or the Linux terminal can, and put it over here. So, but I don't know, like, why they have just wasted their efforts in building something new or something like that. So that's the thing. Okay, yeah, fine. Anyway, um, uh, okay, yeah, let's run it. Python 3 and then uh, dangerous python.py. So you you are just getting okay checking validity and then checked and uh, that's it. And oh here like okay you have sent till only to e. That's because like you have just popped the email out. Let's say like okay this is supposed to be a program that just checks the validity and just stops the program or lets it run or something like that. Okay, so that's the thing, right? but somehow some guy just coded this over there and then that's it like one email got popped off so that's it or like if somebody codes all emails could be uh i want to say uh taken out or something like that but you 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 never know like uh, what's happening and all those stuff like if uh if you're just calling some uh function with some array being passed to it or something like that in python and you're expecting this thing, the next function to act on all elements of this array. You never know whether whether all elements will be present or not, because it's at the mercy of the functions before it. Like this can modify it, do any mess up with it, and you are just powerless. Okay, so that's uh, that's Python. So it's it's unsafe. So that's the thing, right? So yeah, and I'll also talk about it little more after i execute this program right now we have a closure program right so okay so i just named it as safe closure right and it's just saying okay checking validity checked okay checking validity and then check yeah and in during that time it also pops an email okay so that's the thing but the thing is like even though it pops somehow this email doesn't get modified okay so this emails uh stuff doesn't get modified and uh, and over here it just prints send, sending notification to everything right so from a to f right uh, a at a.com to f at f.com so uh that is the difference okay like now imagine like multi-threaded environment where you just pass uh, values variables or objects here there and all those stuff for example like i'm from ruby community and it, ruby has invented a new thing called frozen objects okay so for these, okay, Ruby and Python are comparatively modern programming languages compared to Lisp, but you need to invent something to make things safe and all those stuff. But in Clojure, yeah, like it's B 
baked in by default right so possibly yeah, this program could stop it like if any uh, stop the execution if anything is invalid or something like that but if everything is valid like yeah it just comes to the next line and this email still carries all this payload okay so that's the thing right so that's the advantage of project look uh, one can say look i i can copy and i can deep copy over here and i can also deep copy over here yeah that's all okay right but that should be done quite explicitly and uh, when you're writing uh, what to say like 10,000 lines or something like that with multi-threaded and dependency here there and interconnections here and there mutable things are not good okay, so we need immutability and uh, closure provides it very very well right so maybe yeah for small programs yeah like you can think about the mutability and all those stuff it's it's just like this okay c programmer saying like c is the best but or c plus plus programmer saying c plus plus is the best but uh when you just come to java you, you just know like why was java invented like the pointers pointers need to be managed manually right so that's the thing oh here all these things like okay these are all these are actually pointers okay uh literally you are passing the pointers this email points to this location okay the starting of this location right so that's the thing right literally you need to manage pointers and all those stuff that's what you're just doing it uh, but of course like it's it's kind of sugar-coated way in python ruby and other programming languages but in closure that's not like that like even though like it looks like you are passing a pointer and something like that it's still immutable right so that's the thing right so yeah that's it for this video like if you are thinking about if you're sure like uh, or like look okay uh, let me just tell this one right most startups fail in their first year right so they just don't even cross the first year and very very few cross their fifth year and almost none of them cross cross their tenth year but i am working on in companies that have crossed uh i worked and possibly i don't know the current company i worked i don't know like how long it was there but uh, the companies i work are kind of like 10 plus years okay so that's the thing badly managed code right so that's how it is and they have started their projects and uh, with ruby and all those stuff most of them are ruby because startups means ruby today right most of them or even 10 years ago it was ruby right so but uh uh yeah like uh and they have just started and they didn't follow the ruby on rails best practices and all those stuff uh they have modified the rails framework so much like uh uh it's no longer compatible with 37 signals uh or the base camps ruby or or ruby on rails or something like that and uh they have put all sorts of messy javascript frameworks to it and things just become un unmanageable right so that's the thing that uh that's how it is but if you start with closure but even if you happen to cross 15th year or something like that and even if you if your code goes beyond like 0.5 million lines of code i think the code will still be managed by a small team or something like that but of course like yeah to start it it could take time but uh things will be manageable in the long run so when you are coding for a startup just think like whether your startup is going to fail in the first year or five years then yeah these languages like python ruby are okay right but if it's not going to fail and if it's going to cross the 15th year it's better to start with closure right so uh yeah uh that's the thing right so uh anyway thanks for watching this video bye